Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to go over the Robinson annulation. And I've put an example uh, of the Robinson annulation, perhaps one of the most um, one of the most useful examples of the Robinson annulation uh, here on the screen. This is a reaction that combines uh, an aldol or condensation and a Michael addition reaction. And it is used typically to put together bicyclic structures like the product you see on the left. And this particular uh, diketone, I'm sorry, the product's on the right here. This particular diketone is actually a really important compound because it is structurally similar to part of the typical steroid carbon skeleton. So I've copied in here uh, the structure of cholesterol. And if you've ever looked at the structure of steroid compounds, this four cyclic ring system, six, 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 five, is in common to all steroids. Uh, cholesterol is just a, a common human example. And you can see that that product ketone up there has two of the rings in common, and even one of the methyl groups and one of the oxygen atoms, to cholesterol, uh, and it has other functional groups there uh, that give it a good give a good handle for um, working with building out the rest of the structure. So in this video, I'm going to walk through how the Robinson annulation works, uh, and using this particular Robinson annulation as an example delete my cholesterol structure. Okay. Uh, the Robinson annulation requires a base. Um, generally any base that is acidic enough uh, to do both the, to deprotonate this 1,3-diketone, uh, which as we know has a pKa you know, somewhere in, in the low teens, and is then basic enough to promote the aldol reaction. Anything of that type is going to be sufficient. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to use sodium hydroxide, so that's that's, that is in fact basic enough. But, you know, chemists throughout the world will use all kinds of bases based on the, the needs of their, their what they're doing and the other reactions, other functional groups that are, are present uh, in their structures and systems. And even though the, the two reactions in sequence that, ha uh, that happen in sequence here have been uh, covered by me in other videos more extensively, I'm going to end up drawing all of their mechanisms in this video because this is really a, a single reaction. Like, we don't isolate intermediates along the way. Everything happens in one reaction vessel. And the Michael addition happens first. Right. So the most acidic thing in this reaction mixture is this diketone with that hydrogen atom there in the middle being, um, again, like I said, having a, a pKa somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, 10, 11, 12, maybe. And so, you know, here's our first step. And then we get the enolate anion. Right? And then the next step of the microaddition is, of course, the nucleophilic attack on the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound at that beta position, followed by... and then some sh internal shifting of those electrons. Uh, and then I've got, uh, it gets tricky to draw this thing, but I'm going to be careful about it here. I'll make sure that I'm being careful. And I'm, I'm stretching some things out a little bit, because otherwise I'm going to bump into this other uh, carbonyl group down there. 
Okay, so then we end up with this enolate anion, and, and this enolate anion is going to be protonated by the molecule of water that formed, and actually probably we're doing this in water as a solvent anyway. Let's grab a proton from water. And then we're going to bring this structure down here. And there we go. Right. And so this is the product after the end of the Michael addition step. Part two then is the aldol condensation. Okay. And there are lots of alpha positions next to ketones that can be deprotonated here. But if you work yourself around, you figure out that only one set, only one position can really be deprotonated and lead to a six mem or a smallish ring or a reasonable sized ring. So if we deprotonate at this position that I've highlighted and it attacks this carbonyl group, then we get one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms in the ring. If I deprotonate here, then I would get one, two, three, four, a, a much smaller uh, ring. If I deprotonated here and attacked that carbon over there, then my ring size would be one, two, three, four, five, six, but it would be abridged by cyclic monstrosity uh, with, with a fair amount of um, strain in it. So the, the least strained aldol reaction that can happen is this one. And so that's what we're going to do. And I'm not trying to convince you that this is necessarily the only proton transfer that is occurring at this phase. It's not. Um, it's just that this is the only anion that forms in, in a way that can lead, yield a productive aldol reaction. And so we get nucleophilic attack at that carbonyl group. It's all, you know, fairly close together now because they're uh, in the same molecule. And it's this step here, oops, where we close down the six-membered ring. And at this stage, I've got an anion here. And then that anion is going to pick up a proton from water. And this is the, the first part of the aldol reaction. This is officially the aldol addition step. But under the right conditions, uh, usually some heat, so I probably need to... All right. We can usually um, get these kinds of things to undergo an elimination reaction. And how this reaction, or why this elimination is possible and why it follows the mechanism that it does is the subject of a video on the aldol condensation. So I'm not going to spend a great amount of time explaining uh, the particulars of this specific uh, E1CB elimination me uh, mechanism and why it happens. But we first deprotonate alpha to the carbonyl group and then we have loss of leaving group as a second step. And that alkyl-OH, Al positive charge, with an alkene. And that is the full mechanism of the Robinson annulation. Certainly there are other possible combinations of 1,3-dionds and um, Michael acceptors that would work in this particular reaction combination. It's just that this, this structure here in the Michael acceptor is critical, that it has the alkene on one side and at least 
one carbon atom over here with some hydrogens, alpha hydrogens, on the other side that can be deprotonated. But this chain over here could be longer. There could be other substituents on the alkene. There could be other substituents or a different ring size on the dione. Uh, there's a lot of structural variability that, that's possible. All right, but this one, again, because it can then be elaborated on to make steroid structures, is, is one of the most uh, important Robinson annulations out there. Thank you for watching.